Hi, welcome to a show here on Okemo Valley TV. Um, I'm Joanne Ehrenhaus, the Community Relations Director, together here with Tracy Blanchard, who is our NCOA Outreach Specialist. And we're going to talk today about all the different benefits and programs that are available to many of us who are 60 and over. And we will explain some of the ways that Senior Solutions, the Council on Aging for Southeastern Vermont, can help us as we age to stay in the home of our choice and to receive help to keep us healthy, well-fed, and active and connected with our communities. So let me say hi to Tracy and let's get started. Hi. Hey Tracy, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks good. so much for having me today. Oh, I've been looking forward to this because I know when I talk to you over the phone or in person, you always have great stories to tell about the wonderful ways you've been able to help people access ways to boost their budgets. Yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. That is the motto of NCOA is how can we boost your budget? And that's really important, especially now we have such an inflationary uh, budget here in the United States. We are every day paying higher prices for everything. Yes. But before we get too much in the details, could you please explain to us what does NCOA stand for? Absolutely. It's the National Council on Aging. So we, um, we are an, obviously a national uh, organization mm -hmm. um, that is sort of the um, overseer of all of the local Council on Aging. Right, and we have several Councils on Aging here in Vermont, each Correct. quadrant of the state. Yes. And um, But the National Council on Aging, I guess they have a bigger budget, <laughs> more resources, and because of that they're able to offer us access to some of those programs. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's right. exactly how it works. And as the outreach specialist, what are some of the ways you've been able to reach out into various communities? So what we have is a system. Um, the National Council on Aging um, institutes the uh, benefits checkup. And what that does is it helps us to find programs and supports that people are eligible for in their area oh, that they yes. can take advantage of depending on their income level. Okay, so depending on their income, yep. they meet the criteria for certain benefits. Correct. Okay, and you know, we did know about some of the various benefits we get through the Older Americans Act. Mm -hmm. Um, which was a federal program. But I understand that it's only in the last year or two that we actually realized how many benefits we could access through the NCOA. Yes. A lot of the programs out there that a lot of people are familiar with is the food benefits, the fuel benefits, mm -hmm. the health insurance, like Medicaid benefits through the state. But there are a lot of other um, programs out there. Um, there's uh, what they call V-Farm, which is the Vermont Pharmacy uh, program that is a supplement to the Part D Medicare program. That's a good point because I myself didn't realize that NCOA benefits are available in a lot of cases to people on Medicare. Most people with Medicare think they don't qualify for anything extra. That's very true. I come across a lot of clients that I work with that say that they believe that they are not eligible for any benefits. Um, but when I, you know, show them mm. that, you know, when I look at what their total gross income is per month, mm. um, I show them that they actually are eligible for a lot of different programs. Um, there are programs for transportation, uh, so if they don't drive anymore for one reason or the other, yeah. um, they can get to appointments. Um, and there are programs for, you know, to um, pay their Part 
be Medicare premium. Ooh, wow. um, so even if they don't qualify for instance uh, for straight Medicaid, mm -hmm. uh, they make too much money for that, but they could benefit from not having to pay that Part B premium. Sure. So that puts sure. $170.10 back into their budget every month. That's terrific. You know, and, and who couldn't use $170? No, no kidding. You know, I mean, yeah, nobody would say no to that. No, especially not with the price of fuel right now. Right, um, right. Which is a hot button issue right now for people. And let me ask you, when it comes to paying for fuel, does it matter what kind of fuel you use? No. Okay. Um, no, that is something people also don't realize. So if you heat with electric, um, or propane, or wood, or traditional, you know, fuel oil um, pellets. Hmm. It doesn't matter. You you can apply for fuel assistance and and get help with whatever uh, fuel you use. That's amazing. Yeah. Does, some, it, does some, it matter when when you ask for this help? Does it matter when you apply for for fuel assistance? So, that's um, yes and no. Yeah. Um, so you can apply at any time, uh, but the state has decided that the fuel season mm -hmm. is from November through March. Okay. Those are the coldest months of the year. Yep. And um, so if you apply, for instance, for fuel assistance in October, mm -hmm. you will, um, and you are found eligible for assistance, you will get the full benefit. Okay. If you apply for uh, fuel assistance in December, you lose 20% of the benefit. Because you're part way through the because season? Because you're part way through the season. Ah, okay. Okay, right. so, so. Yep, that makes sense because they figure you don't need the full benefit because you're not going to be paying for November. Correct. So, you, yeah, you, they're not going to pay you as much as you would need to for all the months if you're only going to use it for, say, three months. Correct. Okay, now it makes sense to me. Yes. So, um, you know, a lot of people will, uh, this was an issue we came across this, this last heating season, is that mm -hmm. um, people start the heating season, they're able to pay for the fuel, they get towards the end of the season, and they find they're starting to run out of money for fuel. And then they want to sign up for benefits. Mm -hmm. So they start trying to sign up in February. Well, then they don't get very much money, and it doesn't cover a lot. They're behind on their fuel payment, um, and they, they sort of get into trouble. Sure. So my advice to people is do not wait until you run out of funds to pay for your fuel uh, and then try to get assistance. It's better to... Um, apply early mm -hmm. and get the full benefit. I think that's great advice. Yeah. Really is. And yeah. I think it's something that most of us would not have thought about. I didn't realize either until I started doing this job and, um, you know, found out that there's a lot of little nuances that you oh. don't, don't realize exist. Plus, we have to remember, I don't know how many people who are listening to this can identify most of the Vermonters, especially our older Vermonters, they do not like to ask for help. Oh, <laughs> so absolutely. you know, the last thing they're going to do is try to figure out the best way to get the help and how much more help they can get if they're strategic. They don't even like to ask when they desperately need something. A lot of people do feel that way. Um, they are of the opinion that someone else needs it more than they do. Yeah. Um, they often mention um, children. They're very sensitive to, oh, there might be children that need the food or the fuel assistance more than we do. We can get by. And the that, fact, is, that is very common. But the fact is that the funds that these programs come from are for older Americans. Correct. If you take nothing, if every older Vermonter took nothing, that big pot of money is never going to go to the kids. It can't. Right. It's designated by the federal government to help older Americans. So if older Americans don't apply for these benefits, the money sits in the bank of the United States government and it helps absolutely no one. And 
I will add to that, Joanne, by saying that in the future when they revisit that budget, if the funds are not used, mm -hmm. then the government assumes they're not needed. Mm -hmm. So the next time they go to vote that budget in, they say, well, there was X amount of dollars in there and $100,000 didn't get used. So that budget doesn't need as much as what it had, yep. so they won't fund it and as well as it was in the past. And what happens to that money? It goes to another state. So by not asking for the fuel assistance or other benefits that are really necessary in our climate, you're actually helping to support New Hampshire and New York, which is not bad, but I think it would behoove us to take care of the Vermonters. Right, absolutely. And it's not charity at all. No. This is a way that the federal government recognizes the fact that as you get older, you may have a retirement benefit, you might be getting Social Security, but that might have kicked in 20 years ago. And that amount of money you're getting 20 years ago hasn't gone up much, but prices sure have. And so these programs just help supplement your income so that you now can be living in almost as good a position as when you first retired. Right. Okay. That's, that's exactly what we're looking to do is okay. to help people to boost their budget yep. so that they can, you know, stay healthy, stay active, um, you know, take the medicines that they are prescribed. Yeah. Um, you know, I speak to clients on a regular basis that um, are um, prescribed a medication by their physician mm -hmm. that they won't get filled because they can't afford their copay. Uh -huh. And so they can't afford it because if they purchase that medication, then that means that they can't afford food or they can't afford fuel to heat their home. So they have to make a choice. What are they going to do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's just a p position no one should be in. Right. No. And especially not people who have really have worked all their lives, helped their communities. And by the way, everybody out there, when you do apply for some of these programs and benefits, you're actually helping the local economy of your community because that's more money that is coming into the state that's gonna be spent in your community. Yeah. And so you're helping your neighbors, really. You may not realize it because it's indirect, right. but it's definitely a benefit to everybody around you. Well, and it's, it's um, a benefit to yourself mm -hmm. to be able to stay in your home, s remain in your community. Yeah. Um, you know, people, I mean, it, it has long been proven that um, people do not do as well in the hospital. It used to be, you know, many, many years ago, if you had your tonsils out, mm -hmm. you stayed in the hospital for two weeks. Now you get your tonsils out you're out the next day. Wow. So yeah. it, you know, because they have found that, um, you know, people recuperate better mm -hmm. when they're in their own environment and at home. That's true. We all like to be in familiar surroundings. And I don't know about you, Tracy, but I know if I get up in the middle of the night, I don't have to turn the lights on. I can navigate around my house in yeah. pitch dark. And I think most of us are like that. Yeah. So the fact that we're comfortable in our own environment we feel secure, and we know our neighbors. It has a lot to do with how we recover. It also has a lot to do with our mental health. Yes. Uh, you know, we've gone through the COVID uh, restriction period where we were not allowed to really gather together and do a lot of things. And it really has been, uh, def you know, it really has destroyed in some cases our mental health. Absolutely. And uh, if we can keep all of us as we age in our community and available to do things with people we know, to have people over, to interact with faces and real people, it is amazing the benefit that you derive. Yes, absolutely. Um, that that um, face to face, not just talking to someone over the phone, mm -hmm. um, that is helpful. Um, but seeing someone is uh, absolutely found to be beneficial. 
Um, that oh. is why one of the programs mm -hmm. that we have yep. um, is to distribute tablets um, to individuals uh, that qualify um, for that uh, program. Uh, and it's been really successful. Can I ask you, what is a tablet? For those of you who don't know, let's ask. What's a <laughs> tablet? <laughs> sure. So a tablet is a smaller version of a computer or laptop. Mm -hmm. um, they're very portable. Uh, they come in multiple sizes. Um, so they could be, you know, a, as big as, you know, sometimes they're like an 8x10. Okay. Sometimes they're mm -hmm. a 5x8. It, you know, um, larger than a phone, smaller than a computer. Okay. Um, <laughs> And, but they're very portable, and um, you can put uh, download uh, Zoom on them. Oh, that's and, terrific! You know, yep. so that you yep. can. Uh, so if you have Zoom and your friend or relatives have Zoom, uh, you can have a uh, do a Zoom call. Nice. Um, nice. And. You know, then you get to visit with your grandkids or with your sister that lives out of state that you yeah. haven't been able to visit. And it helps your relatives, you know, say you're up in your 80s, mm -hmm. okay? You're living here in a rural community and your kids are living in Connecticut. Yeah. It's nice that they can actually see how you are physically doing. Yeah. It's almost like a real wellness check. Yes, absolutely. And um, then, you know, you can maintain that and so forth. But I think that there were studies done a while back before COVID, which proved that if you don't have a friend or someone that you can talk with on a regular basis, it's the same as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. It has that much of an impact wow. on your health. So, you know, it's not frivolous to want to stay in contact and to want to have someone visit you or maybe get a friendly visitor or a vet to vet visitor or something through us. That's, that's absolutely a, it, a great it, point. It is a huge benefit to your mental and physical health. And the converse is true. If you're a volunteer, the more hours you volunteer, the bigger an impact it has on your health. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a win-win. Yeah. It's a give and take. Yeah. It, um, it is extremely important as we age, you know, to be as um, active as we can mm -hmm. in whatever way we can, um, yep. to feel like you are, um, you have something to offer. And we, you're the same person that you were 20 years ago. You just, like me, I know better than to go up on my extension ladder and try to hang a Christmas wreath on the peak of my barn. <laughs> So, <laughs> Sounds like there's a story there, Joanne. Oh, oh, please, one of many. I also know that I can no longer really maintain an upright position on my two-wheeler. Okay. I, unless I go really fast, and then I just get too scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we are the same. We enjoy, you can still play golf. You can do so many things. We're still enjoying life, and we're still viable people. Yes. But we have to know our limitations and flourish within those limitations. I and I think that the NCOA benefits are a great way to help support that. And we need to have these supports because as much as we're always trying to recruit young people to come to Vermont, to work in Vermont, I think we need to make them realize that, yes, we want them, we need them, but we also need to provide the infrastructure so that they can be confident that not only do we want them now, but we want to keep them as they age. And be, right. this is like an ongoing universal cycle. We're all in that continuum. And NCOA benefits are a big piece of that puzzle that will keep our society moving along in a positive way. Yes. I absolutely agree. Vermont is the second oldest, uh, has the second oldest uh, population in the country, um, second only to Maine, yeah. um, where the average age uh, in the state is, is second highest. Wow. Um, so um, I looked that up because I was interested to know where we sort of fell in, in the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And so, so um, you know, I think a lot of people come to Vermont. It's a little bit slower pace. Um, and, you know, 
it, it, you know, it's not the hustle and bustle of the big cities, which, you know, as we yeah. age, we're like, you know, that's, the city is more for the, the younger people. And I think that um, there are so many older adults that come back to Vermont, um, you know, for the, the peace and tranquility be, that it, that it provides. Well, and this past weekend I was at the Queechee Balloon Festival, which mm -hmm. you didn't miss too much because it was too windy. The balloons did not go up, but yeah, it, was a, it, was, it was still fun. And I was chatting with a fellow who was visiting from Lake George. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, thanks for coming over. He goes, well, we come over here all the time because we cross the state line and we feel like the air is fresher. And we just feel so much better when we're over in Vermont. And Lake George is not exactly a metropolis. No. It's a lovely area in New York. But so many people truly have this psychological image. And it works because they really believe it, that Vermont is a special place and that we are very, I would say, we're very appreciative of the people who come to our state. And what we are especially proud of is the way we respond to people who need help. Yeah. Like during COVID, how many people helped each other constantly making food? That was amazing. Everything. I mean, we are very, very lucky to live in a state where the people are responsible for each other. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. willing to, to pitch in and help. Mm -hmm. um, I know that a lot of our volunteers are older, yeah. um, older adults themselves yeah. um, and are what what they call vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, and they they just didn't stop. That's right. They were still going to the grocery store and and grocery shopping for people. They were going to the pharmacy and picking up medications for their neighbors. Um, they were so willing to um, create a way to stay connected to their their friendly visitor yeah. or their um, their companion. Um, you know, because they were calling, uh, you know, yeah. instead of going and visiting um, like they normally did, uh, they, were, they were making those weekly phone calls. They were going to the grocery store and shopping on behalf of their, uh, their neighbor or their companion. And um, it was amazing to see. It's very inspirational, the, you know, isn't it? It, it, it is inspirational. Yeah. It's, it, the outreach uh, was um, it just amazing. It was amazing. And talking about outreach, what are, you know, I was just wondering, you have, there's a lot of different programs that NCOA does. Yep. Um, there are things that we hadn't thought about, like there are stories that you've told me about helping somebody pay their electric bill. Yep. You know, I never thought about that. So um, Vermont has created several uh, programs uh, to help people with, um, you know, if, if they have not been able to pay their electric bill, mm -hmm. you bring that one up, we'll talk about that one first. Um, it's VCAP. And uh, that is a program um, where you fill out an online application, um, and I assist with that. So if you don't know how to go online and, you know, fill out an online application, uh, you can give me a call or call the helpline and... What's your number? <laughs> My number is 802-773-7917. And do you know the helpline number? I do. It's 802-885-2669. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> two, two numbers I remember. Yeah, they're, um, they're etched in your mind. Right? They are, yeah. they are. So I give them out there, a lot. I hope you wrote that down and if you didn't, we'll be flashing it across the screen. Make sure you take note and give us a call, whatever your questions are. Go ahead. Absolutely. I'm happy to help. Um, so um, I can help with, with electric bills, um, especially if you have a lot of back, um, back bills. Oh, you're um, kidding. No, this program is very helpful. Nice. Um, the other program I can help with is um, there are two housing programs. One is called VRAP. Mm. One is called VHAP. Okay. <laughs> so VRAP is for those that rent. Oh, okay. Um, and VHAP is for those that have a mortgage payment. Okay. 
So I love those programs because um, with the high cost of fuel right now, um, I have received a lot of calls from people who are concerned about their um, ability to pay for heat next winter. Um, and they're trying to get, uh, you know, their ducks in a row. They're trying to be proactive about, you know, s getting something in place for next year. The problem that I've been coming across is yeah. these are people that um, are over income mm. for the traditional um, food and fuel benefits. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to find creative ways to help these people um, so that they can afford to stay in their homes. Sure. Um, and one of the things I have found is um, the VHAP and the VRAP programs uh, along with the VCAP program, so the electric, the mortgage, and the rental mm. programs mm -hmm. through the state, um, their income levels are higher, ah. which means you can make a little more money yep. and still qualify oh, that's for great. those programs. So the VHAP and the, and the VRAP will get you um, you know, it, it covers your rental um, payments for okay. a year. Oh, wow. Or your mortgage for a year. You're oh, that's fantastic. So it does not pay for your fuel, mm -hmm. but it allows you to take the money that you were going to set aside for your mortgage payment sure. and you can fill your fuel tank or buy, yes. um, you know, buy wood for your wood stove or you know, however that's, you heat your home. That, that's going to be a huge help to a lot of people. It, yeah. Because there are a lot of people in Vermont who make just enough money that they don't qualify for a lot of the regular, you know, I would say normal benefits. Yeah. But they don't make enough money to meet the escalating costs of living. Yeah. So this will be very and, helpful. And we have no idea um, what... Uh, the cost of fuel is going to be this winter. I mean, it it, yeah. it could it could go up further. Oh, of course. Um, I mean, you ever drive down? I was driving down the road the other day, and as I'm driving along, the price changed at the gas station. I know. It, it just it goes up like every 12 hours. It, it it goes up and up. Yeah. So the same will happen with our heating fuel, I'm sure. Yeah, and I know people who live in mobile homes. Mm -hmm. Um, they have tanks that are outside, so they need mm. to do that kerosene mix. Um, and I know the end of this heating season, mm -hmm. um, people were paying over $9 a gallon for kerosene. Are you serious? I, I am serious. So wow. those are the people that um, are really going to be hit yeah. pretty hard this, this winter. Um, so... Uh, one of the things I am suggesting to people mm -hmm. is that they um, contact Sevka um, or, you know, talk to their children or grandchildren about coming over and, you know, web, you know, weatherizing their homes. Okay, so like giving, so if it's a mobile home, sometimes maybe giving better insulation under the house. Correct. Or, you know, simply going around and wrapping it? it well and going around your windows and oh. doors to make sure that there's no like cracks mm -hmm. where air is is um, sure. getting in so you know and that's a relatively simple and inexpensive thing i mean you can go around with you know weather uh, stripping and right. things like that okay. and you know it that's a relatively easy easy thing for someone to do um you know also you know plastic over the windows okay. um, in the winter, sure. um, you know, to help keep the the heat yeah. inside. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I I mean, it's you have to do what you have to do. Yeah, um, and, but the fact that there is help available. Yes. So everybody out there, start thinking now. Go, you know, take a survey of your house now in the good weather, and see where the uh, air infiltration areas are most likely to happen yes and start planning and getting the materials and talk to Tracy <laughs> okay she's loaded with great information and helpful tips and she can really help you to save money 
and to get some assistance that you need. Right. You know, we all, we all need help. I'm Absolutely. sorry. Every single person, I'll tell you, you know, we all know people who are extremely uh, well-placed financially. And you don't think those people like to shop with coupons? Oh. You don't think that no matter how much you have, you don't want to spend it if you don't have to. Well, and it's not always, um, you know, services and supports. Um, we are absolutely, through, through NCOA, we are looking to assist people, mm -hmm. um, boost their budget. Yep. Uh, that's their catchphrase. Exactly. Um, so that, that is absolutely something that we, we try to do. But it is not all about income levels. Some of it is need-based. Yes. So, um, you know, there are people who simply are older mm -hmm. and don't see well, so they don't drive. Yeah. So they need assistance getting to medical appointments, yep. getting to the grocery store to get their uh, groceries, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, getting out in the community um, for socialization. Well, that's where I think those congregate meal sites are so wonderful because, first of all, if you don't have good nutrition as you age, your health will not be that good. Yes. We, we all need to eat nutritionally balanced meals. Trust me, I really go for the slice of cake rather than, you know, the vegetable salad. <laughs> but I know better, and if I, don't, if I eat the cake instead of the salad, it's on me. It's my, it's my stupidity. Okay, or stubbornness. Um, but for most of us, if we don't keep ourselves hydrated and we don't eat our fruits and vegetables, we are going to have problems, which means you may feel dizzy at night because you're starting to get a little bit on the diabetic side but not realize it. If you get lightheaded, you could fall. There are things that we can do to easily maintain our health. Right. And it, it isn't costly. Right. But a lot of these programs are tailor-made to help us as we age. Right. Absolutely. You know, Meals on Wheels is a fantastic program. Mm. So if you're one of those people that doesn't drive um, or doesn't cook, yeah. um, you can sign up for Meals on Wheels. Those are delivered, um, you know, to your home. And you, um, depending on what town you live on, in, um, mm -hmm. meals come, you know, Monday through Friday typically, and then you get a couple of frozen meals for the weekend. Um, so you have a balanced meal to eat, mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to cook. You don't have to worry about, you know, using the stove. You don't have to worry about getting to the store to yeah. buy the you know, the ingredients to make a meal. Yeah. Um, and that's helpful for a lot of people. Sure. And that doesn't have anything to do with what your income is. Right. That has to do with the fact that um, you're older and you can't get to the grocery store. Maybe you can't walk very well. Right. If you can't even walk very well, you can't make it into the kitchen to cook. Right. And you probably, if you do make it into the kitchen, by the time you get there, you're tired. Well, and... Um, the other thing is, it might be a program that you need temporarily. Yes. Like um, you're recovering from a hospital visit. Yep. If you have a knee replacement. Yep. Six weeks, you can't really get around very well, um, and so you're having a tough time making meals. It's it's a great program um, yeah. for someone temporarily or for the long term. Yeah, so you, if people sign up for it, maybe they're getting out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. So they go, yeah, I'd like to have five meals a week. Yep. They can cancel that at any time. Yes. They can alter it. Maybe you only want to get two meals a week because you're busy. You have friends who are bringing food over or whatever. You customize it. It's what we like to think of as person-centered services that we provide. Right. We take into account your likes, your dislikes, your habits, your lifestyle. And it, we don't offer one-size-fits-all solutions. No, Senior no. Solutions is tailored for each person. Right. Yeah, because if you're diabetic, I mean, we do a survey, and if you are, for instance, diabetic or if you can't have salt, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can curtail the meals for your um, dietary needs. True. And don't forget, 
uh, if you're a Meals on Wheels client, because we're the administrative arm of that, we're not doing the cooking and the heavy work and doing the driving. We're funneling the money to the providers. But we also are the ones who have a contract with the registered dietitian who oversees the uh, content of the meals. So if you are a Meals on Wheels client, you can call our office, 802-885-2669, and ask to get a one-on-one -on -one consultation with the dietitian. And so then if you do want to cook at home occasionally, or you can do a little bit, that dietitian will help you understand what you need to be preparing for yourself. Right. I think that's, I mean, I wish I was on Meals on Wheels because I would love to talk to a dietitian and say, well, in my situation, what should I eat? What should I stay away from? How can I best prepare the meals so that I can digest them properly? Everybody has a different system. Right. And this is a way that you can find out what is best for your system. Right. I don't know. There's so much. You, you have so much information for us. You know, I love talking to you. Thank you. And, you know, I think I just want to throw out one thing about our services in general sure. that we might not have touched on, although we did touch on our visitor service. Um, you know, there's a great increase across the country, across the world, in people who are suffering from various stages of dementia. And, uh, you know, it's a very debilitating disease and it comes on gradually, usually, and it impacts the whole family. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say. And the family caregivers, now I think in Vermont we have, what, about 17,000 people who are diagnosed with various dementia and Parkinson's and things, which impacts on about 30,000 home family caregivers and they're suffering almost as much as the people with the diseases because both parties are stuck at home. The caregiver is afraid to leave the person yes. and so they don't go out, they don't see their friends, they don't go to the meetings, they, some of them have to quit their jobs yeah. to care for a loved one and it, it, it's becoming untenable for them. They, they're getting burned out, they're getting health issues, and so to help meet that need, because we have our friendly visitors, our senior companions, our vet to vet visitors, we're fortunate enough <clears throat> to recognize the need, and we did get a grant for $115,000 approximately for this year, so that we can begin to recruit and train 20 new volunteer visitors specifically to give relief to these family caregivers. So this will be hopefully a three-year project, so each year we can renew it. So this year, 115000 which will pay for training and mileage and so forth for the new caregivers. And this is a public health AmeriCorps program. So this is a new, almost like an army of new helpers yeah. to come into southern, southeastern Vermont. We'll be training 20 new volunteers, and these 20 new volunteers will be helping 50 families. And so we're going to implement that starting September 1st, and when we report in how well we have accomplished it, we can renew it for the following year for another hundred and fifteen thousand dollars so we'll have three years of this so by the end we should have a significant impact on helping people who really appreciate it and who desperately need to stay connected well and and it can't help it happen too soon it really yeah. can't there are so many families um, you know and we do have some other programs um, I, I'll just mention briefly. Um, we have the Moderate Needs program okay. that we can sign people up for nice. um, to get a little help in the home. Mm -hmm. um, there's long-term Medicaid, um, which will get individuals uh, a case manager in their home that will, you know, assess the situation and, right. um, you know, get them. 
assistance in the home. And don't they oversee it so that if um, they can remind the person when it's time to renew? Yes. Because how is, many of us need that? Uh, <laughs> right? I have a lot of alarms on a lot of devices <laughs> <laughs> that keep me in line. Yes. I have a lot of calendars and reminders. Yeah. Absolutely. There's also the Dementia Respite Grant. I love um, it. I yeah. know. Um, and that provides um, respite mm -hmm. for families uh, so that they can get a break, yeah. um, which is so, uh, so much needed. Yeah, it's a 24-7 um, job. It, it really is. It, it really is. And, yeah. you know, for these families, it's, um, it's, it's such a relief when they can take a minute for themselves, yeah. for their own families, um, so that they can sort of rejuvenate. Yeah, they so have to recharge they, a battery. Right. Really. Right, because yeah. if they're not well themselves, they can't do what they need to do for their family member. That's right. Um, you know, so it they're they're fantastic programs, and um, you know there are wait periods for these too. Mm -hmm. um, you don't sign up for long term Medicaid and and get on within you know. Exactly. Yeah. We, so we need more volunteers. We need more benefits. We also need more housing. Oh, housing is, uh, it's not just housing, it's affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I actually spoke to um, someone um, at sub, you know, through a subsidized housing uh, entity okay. yesterday. Okay. And uh, I had filled out an application for a client and called to follow up and the woman said you do realize that there is a one to three year wait for subsidized housing yeah and i said i i do realize i so you know what one person considers affordable another one you know finds completely unattainable yeah. um yeah you know one bedroom apartments right now on average mm -hmm. um, are running well over a thousand dollars a month oh. a lot of the people i work with yeah. make you know fifteen fifteen sixteen hundred dollars a month okay. so if you spend twelve hundred dollars on your apartment you have four hundred dollars yeah. left to buy food to buy and that's the kind of person who desperately needs some of these programs for food and absolutely you know, heat, fuel assistance, all these other things to make up for the gap Absolutely. because of the expense of the housing, if they can get in. Right. So what happens to people who can't wait three years? That, that is tough. We look for alternatives. That is when we look at things like, um, you know, the, the VHAP, and the VRAP okay. programs yep. where they can pay for rent. So if someone, you know, finds a place uh, to rent but they just can't afford it, you know, we can at least get them a year of free rent. That's good. Um, and we can, in the meantime, we can sign them up mm -hmm. for subsidized or senior housing and hope that we can so get you, them in. You have to kind of patch together housing for someone who's going to be on a three-year waiting list to get finally into that subsidized housing. Yeah. Okay, so it's a challenge, but I know how hard you're working to help everybody. I really do. And you're very creative. Yeah, <laughs> you really have to, you know, think outside the box. Yeah. Um, you know, because if you can't help someone uh, to get fuel assistance, mm -hmm. If you can help them with their rent or their mortgage, it sort of evens yeah, up. So if you can yeah. help them somewhere else, you know maybe you can't help them with their with their the cost of fuel, but you can help them with their housing the so food. that they can then yeah. And don't forget, everybody, if you sign up for three squares for month, you, you know there's a sliding scale of how much you get depending on how many in your family, right. and what your income level is and so forth, but no matter how much you get, it helps. Yeah. And especially this time of year, when we're in the farmer's market growing season, 
and cash it, crop. That's right. And uh, boy, does that help. It doubles your money. Yep. You take $10 off your card. And at, you get $20. You get $20 of tokens. Yep. So, and you can do it more than once. Yep. Either you can go to one farmer's market on Saturday. You can go to another farmer's market the next Friday, whatever it is. Yep. As long as they're participating, you can actually really double your shopping money. Mm -hmm. And... You and know, it's good food. Yeah, it's fresh, it's healthy. And it helps your local farmers. It helps the farmers, that's right. It helps everybody. So it's a win-win. Well, I think that we've covered a lot of territory. I, I think we have. Um, I'm going to throw out again one more time that we would love to have more volunteer visitors. Absolutely. Because if there's a need, our visitors will try to plug it. <laughs> I'm serious. These people, yeah. they're always begging us, give me stuff to do. Give me somebody to visit. Give me a job. Give me something that mm -hmm. I can do to help. And the fact is we have a lot of need. We especially have need in the Upper Valley. We need a lot more volunteers. We have a ton of, we have all, over 70 volunteers, but we could use double that amount. Oh, absolutely. And these people are amazing. We cover a really large area. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, our coverage area is from Thetford, mm -hmm. I mean, hey, Thetford. <laughs> <laughs> Thetford, all the way down to Brattleboro. Yeah, and below and, and, Vernon. And, right, and then and then over as far as Bridgewater. Yeah. So we we cover a, a big territory. Um, you know, I'm in a, six different senior centers throughout that area. Um, we didn't even mention. I that. know. I <laughs> you know, I I'm you know so I'm all over the place. That's right. um, you know, if if somebody wants to be you know, a volunteer and work with me, I, I'd be happy to put you to work. <laughs> yeah, and the fact is, you know, Tracy does this because she wants to be in the neighborhoods so that the people don't have to travel or wonder how they're going to access things. She goes to all these different senior centers so that somebody could come in and sit with you Correct. and you will help them fill out an application you will explain to them what they need as far as uh, validation of income and things like that. Right. Really one-on-one, -on -one, which is more helpful than, you know, a simple phone call or something. So right. I know you're very busy, and I appreciate the time that you took to come here today to speak on the television, to reach out to the public, yeah. and encourage, we really both encourage everybody out there, even if you don't think you need anything, Give a call. Find out. You may find out you're leaving $50 a month on the table. Right. And better you have it than the government bank account. Right. So um, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Tracy. Absolutely. Anytime. Right. Okay. Thanks, Joanne. Thank you, everybody. Bye.